guys, welcome to what I believe is going to be a two-parter video on building Iodine's brand new cage. At the point where I'm filming this, you can see Iodine is still in her original cage, and I actually have pieces of the new cage lying next to me, but by the time we get to the end of this video, a lot more progress will have been made. A couple of things to cover before we go into this vlog. Once again, this is not really a step-by-step -step tutorial, but more of a, here's a thing I'm building, I hope it inspires you to build something too kind of video. I will try and include as much information as possible, but just wanted to make you aware this is a vlog style video and not a step-by-step -step how to build it tutorial. The second thing I want to say is every single time I build a cage, I always get asked questions about the kind of wood I use and the kind of varnish I use. I will, instead of spending 10 minutes talking about it, put all that information in the description box down below. So if you're interested in knowing that stuff, you can go read it down there. By the way, for the newbies, Iodine is my long-haired female Syrian. She is just over a year old. The cage she's currently living in is one of my own DIYs. In fact, all of the cages you will see on my channel are my own DIYs. There are vlogs showing how I built each and every one of my cages on my channel in a playlist. So in case you're interested in seeing any of those as well, if you want to just see more cage building videos, you can go and check that out. I think that's everything I needed to say. So now let's jump into how I built this cage. Or will build. We'll have... Um, R2 build. Before I could start any building, I had to do a lot of sawing, sanding, and general prep work. The basic wood sizes I used are as follows 150 by 60 centimeters for the base, 150 by 60 centimeters for the back, two 60 by 60 centimeter wood sheets for the left and right sides and 150 by 15 centimeters for the substrate border. Although, as you will see later in this vlog, I realized that was a bit too narrow, so I will recommend making it at least 20 centimeters wide or more. To maximize airflow through the cage, I wanted to include large mesh windows on the side walls, much like in Iodine's current cage, but to make things more fun, I decided to cut the windows into the shape of hamster faces. Doing this is pretty straightforward, but does require some tools. First of all, I drew the design onto each side piece of wood, drawing around a large circular object for the head and using a small dish for the two ears. Once I was happy with the shape of the hamster face, I drilled a pilot hole just inside the shape, inserted the blade of my jigsaw and carefully cut out the window. The easiest way I found to do this was to cut out the head first and then cut out the ears. I repeated these steps on the other 60 by 60 centimeter sheet of wood to make two symmetrical windows. When cutting wood that your pets will have access to, it's really important to sand down each raw edge to prevent you or your pet getting painful splinters and also to give the cage a cleaner finish. I decided to also cut multiple hamster windows out of the substrate border. This took a little more time and effort as I had to make sure that they were lined up perfectly. First, I drew a straight line across the length of the wood, 7.5 centimeters down from the top then a second line 5 cm down from the top. Along the 7.5 cm line, I made a small mark every 15 cm. These would act as the central point for each window. Using a 6 cm hole cutter and placing my drill bit on the 15 cm markers, I created a shallow indent in the wood. I didn't cut all the way through at first so I could check everything was lined up well and correct any mistakes before making the final cuts. To mark out the ears, I used a 3cm hole cutter and placed my drill bit where the 5cm line met the indent of the bigger circle. Once again, I did not cut all the way through, I just created indents where the two ears would be. Once I was happy with the way everything looked, I cut all the way through, starting with the ears and then cutting the head shape. The end result was 9 identical, evenly spaced windows which I sanded down with a Dremel. I varnished every piece of wood with three layers of white varnish, leaving it to dry fully between each layer, and then after the third layer, leaving the whole thing to dry for 24 hours. The next step I need to get on with is varnishing the insides of the windows. You may notice right there, it's completely blank. I haven't varnished those at all on any of the pieces because I want to do those a separate color just to make them stand out a little bit more. I've already prepped some colored varnish for this step, but I'm just gonna insert a clip here showing you how you can make any color varnish you want. So if you can't find it in the shops, not a problem. All you need is your white varnish 
and some food coloring. I always have a huge tin of white varnish in my home because I use it for so many different things and in all honesty I don't need to be buying huge tins of coloured varnish for anything so I take my white varnish, take a little bit of food coloring and I add a couple of drops and then just mix it in and you get coloured varnish. I decided to go with a nice light green shade since green is my favourite colour. This is obviously not a complicated step in any way, shape or form. It's just painting. That's it. The substrate border is drying, one of the walls is drying, and this one is dry and complete, and I can start moving on to the next steps. Now the substrate border is going to have glass behind it, but I'll get onto that probably tomorrow. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have time to do it tonight. But with these side walls, I'm going to be doing something a little different. I will be half meshing and half perspexing these. The mesh will of course provide extra ventilation on top of the mesh door I'm going to be making and the perspex I'm going to be adding to just the bottom half of the hamster face and the reason for that is because if you notice the lower part of this side it's not very deep. It's not great for putting in a lot of substrate and while iodine can't really have a lot because of her issues with certain substrates and her allergies and the fact that the substrate that she has to use the safest for her is pellets and that can't really be piled up high. Uh, it's not going to be much use to her having a high substrate border but I hope I'm going to have this cage for some time and for future Syrians they're of course going to need a lot more substrate so I want it to be prepared for the future. I have some very thin perspex sheets here. This is actually from the inside of an Ikea photo frame, I just cut them to the size that I need. I think these are about uh, seven inches wide, thereabouts, and they should cover the bottom half of to attach the perspex to the wood, I'm going to be using a combination of hot glue and aquarium silicone. The hot glue will just allow me to place it in the position I want without it sliding around, and then I'm going to use the silicone to seal it into place to make sure no dirt and dust can get inside it, but also to make sure it stays in place for longer. And when I add the mesh to the walls as well, I will be covering the top of the perspex with the mesh, so it's going to go right down from the top all the way to near the bottom, not right down at the bottom because otherwise it's going to end up with substrate and poo and all sorts of things stuck in it. Uh, but the Perspex will have mesh behind it then. And that is for extra safety and also a tidier finish. Perspex is now fixed securely in place by those little blobs of hot glue on each corner and using some masking tape I've just covered over the wood on the outside of the Perspex and the inside of the Perspex as well leaving a small gap just where the Perspex meets the wood so that I can silicone it down in place. Now this is the silicone that I'm using. Um, not that that will be much use to most of you since you won't be able to buy this particular brand everywhere. The point is this is aquarium silicon and this is what you need to use when you're making cages for your pets. If you're using any kind of silicon it needs to be aquarium 
or vivarium silicon, anything that is made specifically for animal enclosures. Now different silicons may have different instructions so make sure you read the back of them very carefully and follow each step so that you're securing everything in place and making sure it's safe to give to your pet. This particular silicone takes four to eight hours to dry and needs 24 hours to cure before you can put a pet anywhere near it. So that's fine because I'm definitely not going to have this cage finished in the next 24 hours. So I'm going to start siliconing this down and then we'll leave it to dry. The silicone on the side walls is completely dry and cured. This was a couple of days ago that I did it. So there we go, it doesn't really look any different. Uh, I just need to add the mesh to the back of this wall. I have already meshed the other wall, so I'll show you what it looks like, so you can get an idea. There it is, white mesh on the back. By the way, I didn't buy this white, I did paint this myself. I have the other piece of mesh over here, it's already varnished and dried and ready to be attached. And all we're gonna do is just staple it on a couple of staples from my staple gun, and that's all it takes. staples are a little bit of an eyesore right now but that's not an issue because they are very very easy to varnish over and they should then just blend in with the whole back of this. There we go, that's it. Hey look, it's the me from the beginning of this video. Hey there. The substrate border is looking fabulous, if I do say so myself. I have made one small change by adding a slightly thicker border of green around each window. It just made it stand out more, and I really like the way it looks. Now all I need to do is add the glass behind each window so that the substrate doesn't fall out and go everywhere, of course. I have, and this is going to feel like a, uh, a proper hack moment, <laughs> I have, I believe this is eight, eight or nine uh, glass picture frame fronts. These are a bunch of frames I had that I wasn't using for anything and I was going to get rid of them which seemed like a bit of a waste so I pulled the glass out and thought I could use these in my next DIY and that's what I'm going to do. All I need to do is silicone these down behind each window and I will silicone them all together so they'll be in a nice tidy line. It shouldn't look messy from behind. Not that that really matters because we won't be able to see that bit once the cage has been built but that's going to give me a very clean and very sturdy finish. We are so close to finishing the main structure of the cage. I think, I think all the pieces are prepped now and it's just a case of putting them together. So I'm gonna show you what we have. So we have the substrate border, which has its glass in it. Each little window has been outlined with green. We've got two side walls, which have been meshed, outlined, and have the little perspex border. And we have the back piece and the floor of the cage, by the way, shows just how short I am. 150 centimetre board, almost the same height as me. Yay. I believe the very last thing I need to do before I attach these pieces together is just to drill the pilot holes. Pilot holes are done, and now is the part where I really Really wish I had a second person to help me with because I need to join the two biggest pieces. The is this the back of the base? This is the back. I need to join that with the base piece, which is here. And uh, yeah, this is always kind of awkward and usually results in injury. Nearly lost a foot then. It would have been a really good idea for me to get the drill and the screws before I lifted these two pieces up. That would have been clever, which is obviously why I didn't do it. Can I just leave you two supporting each other? Come on, stay there. Do not fall. And if you're going to fall, please fall forward. Thank you. We are so much closer. 
Let's turn this thing over. By the way, I will be adding wheels to this because eventually this cage will have the uh, Billy XL on top and my biggest pet peeve with the Billy XL is that it was very, very difficult to move around so uh, it's going to be all one big wheelable unit. I decided not to film putting the first wall on because I had this feeling if I filmed it I was going to mess something up really badly but it went well, it works, it's okay I'm feeling a lot more confident to film putting the other wall on so we're going to get ahead with that however, uh, the sun is setting now which means we are on a countdown to my neighbours hating me, so I've got to speed this up. I've tipped the cage onto its back so I can attach the substrate border more easily, and before I attach the main border, I'm just going to join on this piece of wood, and this is purely because I underestimated just how big that was going to come out. For some reason in my head, I thought it was going to be much wider, and it was going to be a better border. Not quite what I was expecting, so uh, we've just got a little bit of extra height on here so we can add a bit more substrate. And that, my friends, is the sound of a drill that is well and truly done with this ish. He needs charging. So there's nothing else I can do now. I've got to leave the drill to charge overnight. Um, yeah, so I guess this is no better time to end part one of this cage building vlog. The very last clip I will include in this vlog because she is wide awake right now is Iodine wandering around the base of her new empty cage. It's of course not finished yet, but I want to show you guys just how big it is in comparison to her so you can get a bit of a better size perspective and know it can be a little difficult through the camera to really see how big or small something is. And I guess I will see you uh, next week with part two. I really hope you enjoyed part one. Thank you so much for watching it all the way through to the end and I'll see you guys next week. Bye bye.